The latest chapter of Reckoner Ragnarok has a lot of lore and purpose behind what is going on in this chapter because Brihilda and her whole main reason why she wants to save humanity and the whole purpose of her wanting to go on ahead and start Record of Ragnarok in the first place. Then we see Loki and how much of a big crush he has for Brihilda. And then also, too, the main focus of what the chapter focused on was Odin and what his main objective is throughout this whole event because he actually wants to resurrect the actual prime god so a lot of this events are happening in this chapter and we just focusing on brihilda because brihilda after choosing her main fighter for the next round she's walking in the hallway and we see loki as he's trying to catfish her as he's disguising himself as odin but Brihilda already catch on and was just like, all right, Loki, like, why are you trying to deceive me and trying to get into my head? But Loki, he's trying to protect Brihilda because he says, look, the gods only need to win two times and most likely humanity will be wiped out. And not only humanity will be wiped out, you will be wiped out as well because of the fact that you went against the gods. So Loki was just like, hey, I can put in a good word so that way Odin won't kill you because Odin would definitely going to kill you if the gods win. But Brihilda was just like, you know what? I'm going to win. We're going to continue on fighting and the gods will lose and humanity will continue on winning. So Loki was just like, look, like I'm not playing any games. This is just only a favor that I would do. You don't have to do anything back for me or anything else. But Brihilda was just like, just ignoring him. So then next thing you know, Loki was just like, so what is your main real reason why you want to go on ahead and do this? Is it because of your boyfriend Siegfried? And that caught Brihilda off guard because she was just like, what did you say? But Brihilda has to play in, in character because she doesn't want to have Loki figure out what her main objective is. Because yes, Brihilda wants to go on ahead and save humanity, but it looks like one of her main goals and the priority is to save her boyfriend. Because we later get an idea of why Siegfried is actually in Tartarus, but focusing on Brihilda and her method because she looks like she wants to use the record of Ragnarok as a distraction so that way she can go on ahead and rescue Siegfried from Tartarus or actually use him so that way they can go on ahead and live happily ever after because her whole main goal is to save her boyfriend. So it's just kind of just really is interesting, like why we see Brihilda, why she's going ham and actually going very serious on the record of Ragnarok and why she wants humanity to win is because of the fact that she wants her boyfriend to get out of jail. And you have to applaud Brihilda because she is a ride or die chick. And so with that, Loki, we focus on Loki and he actually makes this doll that actually looks like Brihilda. And you just see the creepiness, the simpiness of what Loki has for Brihilda. And it's just very weird and creepy in a negative way because not only that he has a shrine of her, he's like combing her hair and just pretending like they have a future together, which was just very weird. But we focus on Buddha and we actually focus on Odin because Buddha actually runs into the real Odin and he actually asks him like, hey, so what's your whole big deal of Siegfried and why he's in Tartarus? Because normally a god that will go into Tartarus, you will have to do the most heinous crime ever. And it's kind of funny because Buddha's actually dressing up as like Sherlock Holmes or like a detective. And also have people looking in on this case. And based on the files that the reason why he's in Tartarus is because Siegfried actually stole a divine weapon, a magic sword, and used it to actually defend his people by killing an actual dragon. 
And that's part of the lore of Siegfried because Siegfried, he is the dragon slayer. And in the lore, I think it's like a German lore that Siegfried got a sword. He's like this knight and he actually killed the dragon with the sword. And that's why he calls the dragon slayer. So he says that with that kind of punishment, it shouldn't even be that serious because he didn't do anything like a crime, like a betraying the gods or the heavens or assassinating the chief god, which belongs to a Tartarus level. And the crimes that you actually put him on isn't worthy for imprisonment in Tartarus. So what is going on? Something seems fishy because the only person that knows the reason why Siegfried is in Tartarus is actually Odin. So he just wants to know what is the real reason? Because he says that I heard that Siegfried is Brihilda's boyfriend. And I figured out that the reason why Brihilda started Record of Ragnarok was to save humanity, but also to, to save her boyfriend. And it's just my theory, but maybe Siegfried is a special and actually precious person for Denden. And which means Denden means a demigod, and which is implied that Siegfried is related to Odin. So it seems as if that Odin actually is pissed off at Siegfried because it looks like Siegfried probably have a relationship with Behilda. Not only that, took his weapon and actually killed one of his precious pets. So it just seems as if that, you know, Odin, he kind of most likely was one of those harsher parents that like you did something wrong and he takes it to the extreme punishment so that way you don't have to do that punishment ever again so it just seems like he's like a very very strict parent but suddenly Odin was just like all right that's enough and we see this aura and we see Odin actually pulls out his divine weapons and Buddha is actually like shook and good thing he already activated one of his technique the future sight to see what is happening because as soon as Odin activated his weapon and he slammed it to the ground gun gear and it just creates this giant like shockwave where the ground is actually like kind of exploding and and even Odin's birds are in shock of the amount of power that is happening. And it's really funny because in the one page we see Buddha actually shook because the aura and he was able to see a future that he doesn't like. But then after he, Odin actually slammed his divine weapon, his spear, Buddha's just like, all right, let's throw hands because Buddha is not scared at all. He's just like, Oh, so this is what happens when I get you angry. And Odin basically was saying that your theories and everything else, the disrespect that you're thinking of, and you're trying to go into my business, I will crush you. I will destroy you. So Buddha, he's just like, you know what? Let's go on. And this is Buddha who is 100% nerfed because he only has one eye. And I don't even think that he has his divine weapon or he's still recovering from his battle against you know the last time that he fought at record ragnarok so of course at this moment buddha actually sees someone coming from another behind him and it's actually bilzeba and bilzeba is injured and bilzeba was just like listening to the whole conversation he's like you know what that's an interesting theory and he goes on ahead and attack odin and odin goes on ahead and try to protect himself and he attacked bilzeba and it becomes like this giant shockwave and we get this standoff between these three gods bilzeba was able to go on ahead and stop the attack with his vibration which is a very powerful attack and it's kind of funny because Bilzeba is injured and Odin is fresh and Bilzeba was able to deflect it, which is very funny. But Bilzeba, he actually was able to call out Odin and his plan. And he's saying that, so your plan and to finish off Buddha's theory is that you trying to resurrect the genesis of the universe, the primary gods, the gods that's on top of the gods. So like in the level, there's just the humans, then there's the actual demigods, then there's the actual gods like Odin's and whatever, and then there's the primary gods. And so it's just kind of just funny to see how, you know, Buddha, he was kind of surprised 
of that theory. And then Odin, he gives like this creepy smile as he is just like, oh, so now you want this hand too, because now you're in my business. Even though Beelzebub, he probably suspected that Odin was going to use him for his plan to resurrect the primary universe god. And it's just something that it was just very, very interesting. But the chapter ends as we see the design for the next round, as it looks like it's going to be like a Japan-like city. And that's just pretty much what the rest of the chapter is, because majority of the chapter is most likely seeing what Odin is planning on doing, because we do see him throughout the whole entire series. And he seems like one of the gods that was very, very suspicious. And honestly, too, like he had something planned on, you know, behind the record of Ragnarok, because it seems as if that he has like one of his main objective of record of Ragnarok is pretty much to resurrect the divine gods. And we don't know why he wants to do that. Um, so we'll figure it out later, probably in the next chapter or next couple of chapters, because I do feel like this fight will most likely will end in the next chapter or this and of course this fight will probably will end while someone is trying to stop this because they're not going to go ahead and try to like have like this chaos and through so most likely this was a very very good chapter i'm really happy to see some more lore because you know record of ragnarok they have to have some bigger meaning besides like this tournament even though the whole concept of this whole series is you know gods versus humanity but there has to be some bigger line in between so it was really good to see some major lore and everything else. So let me know down in the comment section how you guys feel about this latest chapter of Record of Ragnarok and what you guys think, process, or everything. And if you guys do like the video, hit the like and subscribe button. And remember, always be decent. This is the Monotone Man. And hope you guys have a wonderful day and be safe out here. Sorry for rambling towards the end of the video. It, it is what it is. But all right, bye.